In my depression's infancy, it couldn't make words. It only spoke in shrill screams and cries, scratching thorny vines in my throat, burning brush fires in my lungs. Anger and envy burrowed in my veins like parasites, which mutated into guilt and shame, exploded in seven-year-old sleepover panic attacks, red-faced, runny-nosed cry spells in the school bathroom. I hated the way my eyes would puff up, my face blotchy and biled like a rotten straw. Strawberry. I would scrub furiously away at discoloration and salt, hoping for a better person to come out the other side. I didn't wish for death. Death still leaves a life in people's memories. I wished for non-existence, for all the pain I had and had left behind to cease. I wanted to shrink to be locked up in Pandora's box among the rest of the evils in the world. After a second grade diagnosis, graduating from four years of therapy and popping antidepressants like Skittles, I thought the sadness would finally be gone when I'd grown. But my depression grew up with me. It's matured into a warm, heavy fatigue, like it's exhausted being so sad all the time. It pulls me down into my comforter, buries me in my bed, mummifies me in stained bed sheets. It's for the best, it says. If you don't move, you can't ruin your life. If you're alone, you can't hurt anyone. My mom opens my room's locked door after I've disappeared into myself for 16 hours straight. Are you done moping? When are you going to stop feeling like this? I say, progress isn't a straight line always going up. Sometimes the road to recovery is a maze that leads you back to where you started. And sometimes the most you can do is lock your door, let your room flood and just float in your feelings. Let waves of sadness wash over you because soon you'll be baptized into a new day where the black tides will be low and you can feel the sun's warmth on your skin again and you can start over.